We're very lucky to be joined uh, today by Dimitri Daskalopoulos, uh, the uh, the art collector um, and the patron of the arts. Uh, to the Greeks in the in the room, I'm sure he needs no uh, introduction. Even those who have come from elsewhere have probably heard about uh, Dimitri's recent uh, donation of uh, of 350 works of art to uh, to a group of major museums, and that made headlines everywhere, just because of the scale of the generosity involved. Uh, I think, but I think it's also in some ways a bit of a game changer and sort of has really sort of lifted the bar for other uh, collectors in terms of how they make their, their works available uh, to, to a wider public. So in April it was announced that um, from uh, Dimitri's collection, 350, uh, around 350 works uh, would be transferred into the ownership of, uh, of some public museums. Emst here in Athens, uh, shared jointly between the Guggenheim and the MCA in Chicago in the United States, and also 110 to Tate. It's really a staggering act of generosity from you, uh, Dimitri. Perhaps if we could start, if you could tell us first of all about what's in the collection and why you, you because you have also retained some works for your own collection. What's in the collection and why did you decide what you would give away and what we, you would keep? Well, actually, the, the bulk of the collection and the most important works are in the donation. So um, there are some leftover works, uh, and there are some that uh, I have chosen to live with, but uh, the collection is, uh, contains uh, all the important artists of the last 40 years and some good works uh, of each one of them. Uh, which I always deemed uh, museum worthy and uh, you know the kind of artworks that should be seen by more people and, and become part of art history and uh, throughout my collecting career I never felt like an owner of the artworks but more as a caretaker as I say of the creativity of other people these are works made by artists with a passion. They gain a meaning if they interact with the public, uh, and, and not stand alone. An artwork in a crypt doesn't even exist. And uh, it was for a long time my intention to make these available to as wide as public as possible. That was the motivation behind this act. The way that it's been uh, split up between these four museums is pretty complicated. How did you decide what would go where? And why didn't you want them to stay in one place? Well, this is a large collection. Uh, I was always, I'd say, you know, uh, bold enough to follow what artists make and not choose uh, things as we collectors usually do, things that we like to live with, things that would hang on our walls. I saw the creativity of, of contemporary artists who do all materials, all sizes, they, uh, they dream big and make big, so I followed that. So this is a collection of large artworks. It could not fit in any one museum. And uh, the split up was made uh, trying to keep, we actually made three subsets of the collection and its theme. I would say that each of the subsets of the, of the three donations uh, is representative, uh, representative cross section of the collection. And uh, it could you know, keep the spirit of, of the collection. Uh, we split it up in three parts, then looked at what the, the museums that we would donate to uh, had already in terms of artists and artworks, and we made a final listing, which we offered to the museum uh, as a total gift, but of course with the option for them to uh, reject something that they have or they don't want for any reason. And I was happy enough to see that, you know, they were, two works in one gift and two in, a, in the other bunch that uh, were not taken by the museums. So as I say, 
everybody was happy and nobody was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> there is, was a significant portion of Greek artists in the, but most of that is staying here in Athens at Emst. Do you think maybe you might have missed an opportunity to promote Greek art abroad by concentrating those works well, here? Well, I'd say, yeah. I, I know there's been a long history throughout uh, time of donations made to museums, so uh, I did not do something that has been done, but if I say the difference of this donation, okay, it's its size, but also the fact that uh, it creates uh, synergies between museums. The gift to the two U.S. institutions was gifted for joint ownership, which is uh, something that's very rare in, in the museum world. And it gave the opportunity to these two museums to uh, work together, put uh, different curators, different mentalities, and uh, see how they will activate these works for their public in conjunction or separately. I have uh, asked uh, Tate and Emst, and it's part of the very simple agreement that I have made with the museums, to uh, work together and uh, I ask that our museum here in Greece, beyond the works that they get directly, 140 works going to the National Museum here, but they also have a priority for the works that were gifted to the Tate, and a, a priority to borrow them. And uh, there's, there's a, an open a, a bridge, I would say, for uh, a museum of contemporary art to be able to interact more with the Tate more actively and, and uh, get uh, know-how. And the third characteristic is that I did include Greek artists in the two international gifts, the gift to the Tate and the gift to the United States, and uh, probably works that would not very easily have ended up in those museums, and they were accepted with great interest and, and also gratitude by these international museums. What you've done in giving it to um, an institution, particularly while you're still with us, is, is, is unusual. I mean, a lot of collectors these days, I'm thinking, for instance, say, like the Broad Collection in Los Angeles, where a museum has been created or a space has been created in which to uh, to display the collection. I was thinking if you had done that here in Athens, that would be, I mean, the quality of what's, what's in the collection would have been a draw in itself uh, and you know, perhaps could have contributed to the Athens effect that we were talking about before. Was grounding your own musician, uh, your own museum out of the collection something that you considered? And if so, why did you decide not to do it? Uh, considered and very quickly rejected as a, as a thought. Um, I believe uh, in uh, culture as a very important public good. And that is why uh, the state, especially in Europe, is very active in supporting culture and its development. And that, uh, you know, the, uh, the importance of culture and the existence of the state are forever. We are here for a small time. Uh, and uh, I put trust in public institutions whose job is to preserve the works, to expose them to the public, to put them in dialogue with other art, and to keep them um, you know, relevant or judge them over time with the art that is to come. I do not believe that any private institution can do that, for a long time at least because any private collection or private initiative is basically dependent on the passion of the person who is doing it. And when they are not present, there is no board of trustees, there is no endowment that can keep that going. So after a while, that becomes an irrelevant capsule in time of somebody who had a passion at some time and put together a collection. Uh, of course, I avoid 
saying that I'm the good example. I know many collectors who do very nice things and everybody have their own way of thinking. And all of these initiatives are positive. My choice was not to build my own museum. I was always hoping that the Emst will fill up with 5,000 people in a day, as it did yesterday. And I'm happy it's doing that. It doesn't need any competition from uh, a private museum. We'll have some time for a couple of questions from the floor, but I'm just wondering, was there a particular piece that for you was the hardest one to, to give away? Uh, I was saying the last days when I was doing some Zoom calls with the team preparing this and they were sitting, you know, with uh, one of the works from the collection in the background, I would say to everybody, please change. I, I don't want to see uh, this, <laughs> that it's going now because it hurts me. I've loved every single piece and I still do, but I hope now that, uh, uh, and you said I'm still here and that's part of the cunning <laughs> of the gift because I will also live to enjoy uh, this dissemination of these artworks and its dialogues with uh, the other art when the museums, as I say, activated for the public many times. Great. If you keep your questions short, we can probably have two. Um, this lady here. Good afternoon, Mr. Daskalopoulos. You said you always felt like a curator, like a caretaker of the art that you were collecting. I would like to know, before you started collecting, when you were young, when you were a child, what was your connection with art and when you decided to connect for the public? Uh, I say that uh, art collecting was not even the most important part of my um, association with art. I've been an art lover and I remain an art lover, so I move around in the art world in many different ways one of which was a collector, because I have a foundation to promote contemporary art for the Greek public. I have been supporting museums and artists over the years. I never fail to go back to uh, the great museums anywhere in the world to see and admire human creativity. So uh, it's been in me, it's part of me, collecting was an interesting activity for me. Donating was also something that came naturally, and I'm, I'm still around here uh, as an art lover and trying to contribute as much as I can, wherever but I can. As a child, you were connected with art? You were doing yourself uh, art or what? No, I say I, uh, I, I cannot even draw a full circle. <laughs> so... <laughs> My uh, creative activity has been building this collection around a theme and putting together works that were made by people who can <laughs> express themselves very well and putting together works to, to, uh, to make my own artistic statement, I would say. We've got time for one more as long as it's brief. I wonder if there's anyone in my blind spot, this gentleman here. <laughs> Apart from uh, the state accepting donations, do you think it should uh, actively encourage uh, collectors in the future in some way, whether via tax breaks or what have you, Especially, particularly the Greek state? Well, uh, Europe does not have tax incentives. Uh, the United States does, and I think it has been an important factor in the fact that a lot of collectors give in the United States more. Uh, I personally did not claim or will not get any tax incentive from this uh, donation. Uh, it is though uh, remarkable to see in this environment when we're talking about tax incentives that in my country the uh, recipient of a gift still has to pay uh, half percent donation tax. Uh, 
which of course in our case I would not ask the museums to pay, so I have undertaken to pay that on their behalf. I think it's, it's been in a long discussion now about, uh, it's, it's on the way out, I hope, soon. Great. That's all we've got time for, but thank you so much, uh, Dimitri. It's great to talk with you. And I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Yorgos Archimandridis, for our next panel.